my name is Jean Murphy, I'm with Undercurrents in Swansea and I'm up here at the Rebellious Media Conference which is coming to its end, it's been going on for the past two days. But even though it's coming to its end, there's still lots of really interesting people about and I'm going to be talking to one of them now, so would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Con Coughlin. Hi Con, now um, you have various interests and you've been active in our previous chat in many different ways but what I'd really like to talk to you about is anarchism because it's a subject that's rarely covered in any shape or form in this country and when it is it's never that, the ideology, it's always the anarchists i.e. black bloc at protests. So I'd really like you to tell me a bit more of your take, how you would uh, explain to someone what anarchism is. Ooh, big question. Uh, anarchism is a philosophy, it's been around, political philosophy, it's been around for about 150 years now. Um, goes back to people of Kropotkin, Kunin, back in the 18th, 19th century. Um, and over the intervening years, it's grown, it's developed, it's taken on life. It's gone in many different directions, come back together again, um, and broke, in some places broken into different strands. So some parts of anarchism are very much kept to its workerist roots, you know, in terms of dealing with working class issues and working class struggles. Others have, other parts have looked at more emancipatory struggles, such incorporated a lot of the philosophies that came out of the women's liberation movement, the environmental movement. Um, so it's grown and developed quite a lot. Would you say there is one particular strand of it that's most active today, or the one, the strand that excites you most? I would say that over the last decade or so, all strands have seemed to be growing in their own way, um, which is quite an interesting. Normally, you do get the variation between them, but I'd say that cross fertilization that happened certainly in the UK has proven to be really, really strong. For example, a couple of years ago, we had the Anarchist Conference in London, which brought all, all stripes of anarchists together just to talk about who they are and the differences between them. And do you find that uh, anarchists stay in their box, the green anarchists or the, um, the workers, red. the red, yeah, narco, yeah. Or how, how would you, um, or, or is there a lot of crossover, are people working together? I think there's more crossover than is commonly recognised. Um, you do see a lot of people engaged in a lot of different struggles and quite often they parcel it up and you, know, you don't necessarily see it, but I think the connections are all always there. We all recognise that we do all have a role to play in each other's struggles and we do you know, that classic anarchist thing of mutual aid and solidarity. And given the current economic crisis and this whole financial meltdown, possibly, um, what do you, would you say about the anarcho-syndicalists, the workers aspect of anarchism and, you know, collectively, you know, coming together in workplaces and occupying workplaces, is that ready to step into the breach at the moment? It's hard to say. Um, there's an awful lot of damage being done politically over the last couple of decades. Uh, I think there's needs a quite a bit of work to rebuild back up, but certainly the interest is out there. The structures of organising are moving more towards anarchist-inspired uh, philosophies. So you're seeing a big decline in the more mo traditional Marxist perspective as people actually recognise the power of non-hierarchical organisation, which is what anarchism has really brought. But is there any hope for that kind of workplace anarchism in the light of the power of the trade unions and how establishment they seem to be? I have to say, at this conference here, you know, I've seen more discussion about alternative trade unions and people looking at you know, trade unions that are more representative, for example, the uh, IWW. I think, you know, Would you explain that to those listening? The IWW is the International Industrial, sorry, Industrial Workers of the World. It's one of the oldest unions still going, um, branches in every country across the world, just trying to bring the workers together in a common struggle. So j just to wind up, um, how would you get people excited about anarchism? How would you get people excited? Um, anarchism has so much potential to give people power back over their lives. And once you get over that bridge of people taking responsibility, they become so excited. They, you just see people's eyes being opened. I think the more we can see just how much power we can return to our ordinary everyday lives, 
that's when anarchism will really, really grow. Right, maybe this is anarchism's time has come. Certainly we hope so. so. Mm -hmm.